You're probably wondering, why is there a flower in my ear? And to do that, I'll have to start at the beginning of the day this morning. 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> this is what it looks like right here, gang. How pumped up are you? You are really full. Kind of ridiculous. Geology. Yeah. 4.30 in the morning. We just landed and uh, it was a good flight. I wasn't conscious, but I'm sure these people can tell you all about it. I got a little anxious because when we when we took off, we, we actually left the earth. And I just love the earth so much. So we finally made it to Spokane, Washington. You may be wondering, what are we doing here? Well, we came to study Mars. That's right, we're studying Mars right here on Earth. We can do this because the channeled scablands have many features similar to Mars, such as landscapes carved by flooding water or sand dunes shaped by the wind. We're also here to study columnar basalts, shown here. Jointed basalt columns like these were recently discovered on the surface of Mars. The channeled scablands are located in eastern Washington state. The landscape here is characterized by a network of massive canyons that were carved by a series of mega floods at the end of our last ice age, about 15,000 years ago. Now with that out of the way, let's get back to the story. any of our other videos, you may have already met him. Say hey, hi. Neil. Hi, say, Neil. Say hi, Neil. What's up? He's soft-spoken. I heard him, but you might not have heard him because I don't know how good the microphone is on there. But yeah, it's not. He said it. It's it's hard because well, the helmet, it you know, the sound doesn't really come out very well. But if you have a microphone set up, you can hear everything he says. He's actually really funny. So Neil's really excited to uh, learn about the Channel Scablands because he's always wanted to go to Mars, so this yeah. is kind of his opportunity. Awesome. So, All right, we'll thanks. see you
these columns here. This is our first column we're working on. We are Team Raptor. It's right here. There's uh, evidence of raptor claw. And then right here are Stria. Hopefully you can see them. We marked them each with the chalk. All the ones that we can see visually. Rock right. Dog, take one. Rock Dog, take one. <laughs> uh, so, the Stria are really neat. They actually indicate cooling rates because as the basalt cools and contracts, uh, this is the point of uh, basically crack propagation. It'll cool, 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 and break. And then cool, 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 and break. And that's what these lines indicate. All right, so I was talking to Josh, and I was like, Josh, why is Heather way over there? What I'm trying to tell Fred is... And then, and then he was like, oh, maybe because she just wanted to walk over there. And I was like, yeah, I know. I was just joshing you. And then he goes, no, no, no. You can't Josh, Josh. Exactly. I mean, because to Josh, a Josh is to almost say, like, hey, I'm Josh. I came into this world as Josh, but the real Josh is standing here, and I know a Josher when I see a Josh. He invented the Josh. Yeah, I invented Josh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy. Um, right now we are in region terminal moraine deposits were left behind. This entire area thousands of years ago during the last ice age was covered by thick glaciers. So when they retreated they left behind all sorts of strange materials that are not from this area. This rock is an example of this process. This kind of thing does not form in this region. This was probably brought down from the Rocky Mountains by a glacier thousands of years ago and then left behind when it was melted. Uh, these are some other examples. They're called erratic because they're not from around here. They're strange. Andy, how does this like feel? It feels really, really slimy and slick. Like Fabulous. there's soap or something in it. <laughs> or sodium bicarbonate. Whoa. That's Whoa. Great. All right, we are at Frenchman Springs Cooley. <laughs> Rock Doc here. As you can see, we're doing the most important part of geology right now. Uh, it's an integral part of any geologist's day, which is the fun part, i.e. climbing. We just climbed up this giant tower. I've uh, dubbed this one Goddard Day Tower because it's the best and biggest tower here. Here we have the red bellied lizard. He's very rare in these parts, so it's a real treat for us to see him today. He's trying to find a mate. He does this by doing many push ups and running around aimlessly. He thinks this will attract a female mate. I'm attracted. <laughs> This is the mighty Columbia. Its rivers run deep and wide. Higher above that. Um, so these uh, ripples that you can see over here are like sort of 10 meters high in total. Uh, and so they must be formed under about maybe 100 meters of water. Uh, must have been falling through here. If you look at the hydraulic studies, if you look 